Good, 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 good. Um, I would like to say a um, warm welcome to everybody here in, uh, in Barcelona. It's my great pleasure for all of you to be here. And uh, a warm greeting to the 7th Global E-Commerce Summit. It's my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of all of us here at, uh, at E-Commerce Europe. When I was 18, I worked at a department store, selling records to my friends and to my neighbors and you know, to everybody around me. At that moment in time, Saturday Night Fever in Greece were most popular. And people were lining up in lines and big lines to buy these records. At that moment in time, I came aware of how much fun it is to help customers and to make them happy. For I think that's what retailing is all about, making people happy. And here we are today gathered in Barcelona, many years later, to discuss the world of retail, the world of omnichannel, the world of entrepreneurship, and to get a feel for the opportunities of and for new business models, as well as to take a look at the rise of emerging markets. I think it's hopefully also that we will be able to be here together and to talk about how we can actually put more smiles on the faces of our customers, because I think that is what retail is all about. Now we're living in exciting times. The changes that we are experiencing in our society are of a pace that we have never seen before. And I think that's pretty darn exciting. I'm not sure about you, but on my travels all over the world, when I talk to entrepreneurs, to CEOs, to startups, when I talk to governments and to policy makers and politicians, I can feel the shared excitement of all the change that is happening all around us. New digital technologies are having an impact on our daily lives. They are changing the world of retailing as much as they are changing our society. <coughs> Now, all around the globe, we see that government, policymakers, businesses are responding to the need to change from an old economic order to a new economic reality. The European Commission has set up a digital agenda. It wants to establish an internal market where you can buy cross border and do that without any hassle, free, safe, and sound. Yesterday, Ecomers Europe held its annual conference with about 350 people here in Barcelona with the theme where policy meets business. And we discussed the greater barriers for doing cross-border e-commerce. So what does this society of transformation mean for the world of retail and for the world of e-commerce? Now I've been in the business of e-commerce since 1995. I guess I was one of the early adapters. And over the past 20 years, people have been asking me this question. Will the rise of online shopping lead to the end of traditional retail? And to answer that question right away, I don't think so. There will always be retailers around who want to do stuff the old-fashioned way, and, you know, and that's fine. In the beginning, they asked me that question with great skepticism back in the 90s. Then, when the internet bubble burst, they really laughed at me. But then as the years rolled by, the question became more serious some people got worried. <coughs> now, 20 years later, I'm asking myself the next big question. Will we come to the end of all? And to answer that question right away too, yes, we will come to the end of online shopping. For what we see happening in retailing is a new economic paradigm. The old physical economic order is replaced by new digital economic reality. What we see is that digital technology will be dominant for all shopping. Hence, this will mean the end of online shopping, as all shopping in the future will be digital. No matter where, how, or what you buy, at home, at work, at the train, in the high street, or even online in the store. I see six new types of economy emerging that together will form this new economic reality where all shopping, at the end, will be online dominated. In the blurring economy, we see two things happening. Business models are becoming interwoven. All the new business models are being mixed beyond any traditional retail structure. 
and two, I see that the players in the retail chain are assuming new roles, also beyond any traditional retail structure. In the new economic era, there will be an interweaving of new and business models, of new and existing business models. Lost, lots of traditional retailers still think that uh, retail is all about selling products and services, that e-commerce is all about selling products and services online, that there's a clear distinction between B2C and B2B. Well, all of that is no longer true. All these clear distinctions in retail are failing. Retail is really about selling products and services, and e-commerce is really about selling and products and services online. Now, we've seen this converging already happening for some time. Supermarkets have been selling non food for many years. Of course, we all have seen how Amazon developed itself from a bookstore into an everything store. But now I see insurance companies selling products, department stores selling insurance policies and even wills, and aircraft companies selling package tour holidays. They are moving beyond any traditional retail structure. If we look at the new roles that players in the retail chain are assuming, we see, for example, manufacturers and big brands selling uh, products directly to consumers. We see travel agencies become communities of independent travel advisors. And telecom companies are becoming banks. I visited Alibaba a few times in Hangzhou, and you might want to check out Alibaba's digital-based business model, which is really built up from the synergy of a B2C business model, where businesses traditionally sell to consumers, of a C2C business model, where consumers sell directly to other consumers, and a C2B business model, where consumers sell back to the businesses. Now, Alibaba's business model, therefore, is a B to C to C to B business model, if you come to think of it. You know, because traditional banks could not service Alibaba, they started their own bank. They started their own payment service, Alipay. And because Alibaba's businesses and customers wanted to have more financial service, they wanted credit, they started their own bank. I know this Chinese bank that has become a retailer, simply because it lost all of its transactions to Alipay. In Kenya, the largest telco company, Safaricom, is developing itself into a financial service provider. And in Japan, I know the portal of lifestyle products that is developing itself into a mobile payment platform, where consumers can make one-click payments by smartphone, both online and offline. Now, I've talked to the founder, uh, Yoshiki Yasui in Tokyo a few weeks ago. And I asked him, how do you see the future? And he told me bluntly, my ultimate goal is not to become a retailer, not to be a retailer, but to become a bank. Of course, I've invited Yoshiki to come to Barcelona here at the summit next year in 2016. And finally, as all business models are becoming interwoven and the roles in the retail chain are becoming blurry, it was Jeff Bezos who said, Right at the start of Amazon, you know, Amazon is not a retailer, but a technology company that happens to do retail. You know, this also is true for, but with a twist, for Google, who will prove to be a technology company that happens to become a retailer. Mm -hmm. Facebook and Pinterest will prove to be social media companies that happen to become retailers as well. It was Instagram who just added the buy button last week. In another observation of the old economic order and the new economic reality of a blurring economy, we will see lots of companies, large and small, continue to grow. The key to their success is their ability to disrupt their own business model and to assume new roles. Now, disrupting your business model is key in a blurring economy. For if you don't, even the Googles and the Facebooks, they will become old economy. When I talk to Google executives, their biggest concern is that they will become an old, bureaucratic technology company. For before you know it, they will be surpassed you know, by new young startups, and the Google and the Facebooks of this world will become part of the old economic order. You know, it's like Elton John who 